Hello, everyone. I am over the moon about our reveal today. We are revealing the ancestry of the greatest baseball player ever in history, <laughs> Josh Gibson. And I cannot wait. But first, I want to talk a little bit about uh, remember who you are and why we're even doing this. I'm Dr. Gina Page, co-founder and CEO of African Ancestry.com. We are the pioneers of genetic ancestry tracing for Black people around the world. And this summer, we were looking at what I think is a Black pride renaissance take place. Uh, people were Blacker and prouder than ever. And there in that was a series of, um, I'll say, mo movements of resistance that I saw start to pop up. And I thought, what can African ancestry do to contribute to this besides the work that we do every day in reconnecting people to Africa? And so we developed this campaign called Remember Who You Are. And what that is, is a celebration of the people, the places and the spaces over a 1000 year continuum that are rooted in our Africanness. When we learn about these people, places and spaces, we learn more about who we are. And that's the work, the identity work that we do at African Ancestry. So it is such an honor today for us to be talking to two descendants of Josh Gibson, the greatest baseball player to ever play the game. I have with me today, Sean Gibson, who is the executive director of the Josh Gibson Foundation, and also Melba Brown, who is the great niece of Josh Gibson. How are you all doing today? I'm doing Great, well. thanks for having us. Good, thank, thank you. you for being here. I know that there's a lot going on. Um, we are in, like I said, in the middle of this awakening. We see it in the protest with record numbers of young black people hitting the streets, demanding our, our, our rights as humans, but also as Black people and the descendants of those who built this country. We see it in people taking our tests, like you have, Miss Melva, uh, to uh, trace their ancestry as a form of resistance. We see it with the 2020 election, with Black people just, as, as our, PR, our PR partner, Nicole, would say, showed up and showed out, demanding to be, uh, to be seen and heard. And we know the outcome of that. But we're also seeing it in baseball, in Major League Baseball, with the renaming of the MVP award. But we'll, before we get to that, Sean, can you tell us who Josh Gibson is and what maybe the three things that you think people should know about him? Yes. Um, well, we all know Josh Gibson was a great baseball player who played in the Negro Leagues, uh, the time when Major League Baseball segregated um, African-Americans for, for, for denying African-Americans an opportunity to play baseball. So I'll say, you know, some some of the things that people may not know about Josh Gibson, the three things I would say to describe Josh Gibson is one, um, I don't want to want to say this one, but we all know he was a great baseball player. So that's number one. He was a great baseball player. We all know that. And he's in the Hall of Fame in 1972, induction into the Hall of Fame. Um, but one of the things that people don't know on a personal side that we want to know is that, you know, Josh Gibson was a single parent. Um, his wife died giving birth to the twins of his children. So, wow. um, and, and, and the story was is that he actually wanted the doctor to save his wife and let the twins go, but it was already too late. Mm -hmm. So that's probably one story that I'm pretty sure your listeners don't know about that. That's more of a personal side of Josh Gibson. Mm -hmm. And then the other story would be is that he was a great family man. Um, you know, he loved to be around his family. Um, you know, he was a big guy. He was, uh, you know, as people say, superhuman type of uh, type of figure. But he loved to be around his family. Um, he loved to support his family. Um, the twins were raised by his wife's family while he was still playing baseball. So when you mm -hmm. talk about three of the things about Josh, I would say one that he was a, a great baseball player and inducted the Hall of Fame in 1972. Uh, on the personal side, his wife uh, died in labor. Uh, giving birth to their twins, to their children. And number three, he was a great family man. Well, speaking of family, Melva, how are you related to Josh Gibson? Okay. 
my mother was his sister. There were three children. It was my mother, Annie, Annie Gibson, and Jerry, which is the other brother, and Josh. Oh, okay, and, so and you're I actually his family. niece. Yes. No. Uh, yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. I'm, I'm, there's, there's four of us, and I'm one of the four of her girls. Okay. And so you must uh, have some stories then since he was your uncle. I mean, you were, I don't know if your age, but I'm sure you've heard, you had some family stories. Can you, is there one you can share with us? I don't know. Yeah. Well, this, I, I really, uh, I really didn't know him because I was young. He, he died the year I was born. Okay. So, um, I, I'm, I'm only telling what I was told. <laughs> Well, isn't that how it works like, in black families though, Melva? With the stories right, that get passed right. on. And we'll see how you do. <laughs> and I would agree with Sean. Uh he was a family man. I understand he he dreamed baseball. He, this is all he knew. When he was a young boy, he played baseball and he dreamed baseball. And then he also was a family man. But uh the story that I much is when he would uh go out of the country and come back, he would take the girls and sit them down, Annie's girls, and he would show them how the table should look and how it was prepared and where does the fork and knife goes and where does the plate goes. You know, at the time, they didn't know all that. And he would take the time to teach them that. And also, he liked to dance. I understand he would grab the girls and say, let's dance. And they would uh. look at him like, oh, no. We lost Melva right at the right at the, <laughs> the climax of the story. Sean. Yeah. Well, well, let's talk about um, while we wait for her to come back. Um, can we talk about the foundation? What it, what have you been charged with at the foundation? Yeah, I'll just continue Melva's story first. Okay. She come okay. Down. okay, Melva, do you okay. want to continue? Okay. So he would okay. dance with the girls. That's one of the things I would I would remember them saying that they had so much fun with him because he was such a heartfelt man and he was a humble man, you know, and, um, and I, and I know that, uh, I would enjoy it if I was around too. <laughs> Very nice. Sean, you were going to add? No, I was going to say, yeah, you know, from what I heard too, the same thing what she was going to say when she jumped off is that, you know, he loved to dance and like mother said, very humble guy. I think sometimes when people think of, um, a superstar athlete, they may be braggadocious or something like that. But from what I was told, he was a very humble guy, like a happy-go-lucky type of guy. Um, and like Melba said, love to be around the family. And, and, you know, teaching those girls that proper etiquette was probably yeah. huge back then because, you know, um, at a young age, you don't get to learn those things. So he was teaching yeah. the kids some things that they can carry on in their future lives. Right. It sounds like he was a renaissance man. That's the first thing that came into my mind. He was traveled. Yeah. And then he came back and engaged with his kids to teach them the ways of the world. Right, right. Yes. So Josh, I mean, Josh, Sean, can you tell us um, how you're related to Josh Gibson and how you came to be the executive director of the foundation? Yep. So I'm the great grandson of Josh Gibson. So my grandfather was one of the twins. Um, he's Josh Gibson Jr. And so okay. the, the twins that were named after the parents, so it was Josh and Helen as the parents, it was a boy girl twin. So the young lady, the girl, my aunt was named after the mother, Helen, and my grandfather, Josh Gibson Jr. was named after his father. And so that's how I'm related. I'm the great grandson of Josh Gibson. The foundation got started actually by my grandfather, Josh Gibson Jr. He was the one who was a mastermind and came up with the foundation. And basically he wanted something to keep not only his father's legacy alive, but the other great Negro Leagues baseball players legacy alive as well. And by us living here in Pittsburgh, we had two of the greatest teams, the Homestead Grays and the Pittsburgh Croppers, but Josh played on both of those teams. And so I got involved with the foundation early on after I got out of college in 1995. And I expanded the foundation from just at the time was just a baseball organization. And then we added educational components where we have our STEAM program, we have our mentoring program, we have a curriculum in the schools called BOSA. And BOSA stands for Business of Sports Academy, where it teaches kids the business side of sports. Uh, we see so many young kids who want to be professional athletes, which is great. 
but you also can be able to be, you know, be involved in sports behind the scenes, sports media, sports marketing, sports law, and so on. So uh, we have about 300 kids in our program. We have three sites here in Pittsburgh. Um, we are a partner to the city of Pittsburgh Parks and Recs. So we have a site there. And we also have two sites in the Pittsburgh Public Schools. Um, so we're excited about it. I mean, we was hit, you know, a little bit because of COVID this year. Um, as you mentioned earlier, this is the 100th anniversary of the Negro Leagues. The Negro Leagues founded February 13th, 1920. And so as we're coming to the end, um, due to COVID, several things throughout the nation has been uh, rescheduled till next year to continue on the celebration of the 100th year anniversary. I love to hear that. And, you know, I think 101 is just as important as 100. So I, I hope that African Ancestry can join with you. I would love to do that uh, to help spread the spread awareness and, and raise awareness so that you can continue to grow the programs that you are offering uh, through the foundation. Well, the other thing is, too, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but, you know, Josh played in D.C. There was a team called the Washington Homestead Grays. And I think people get confused with thinking that D.C. had their own team, but it was actually the team from Pittsburgh that played in D.C. as well. And so when you see a Homestead Grays uniform and you see a W on this league, that stood for the Washington Homestead Grays. They played their games at Griffith Stadium, which now is the old site of um, where Howard University Hospital sits at. That's the old site. So if you go to Howard University Hospital, you'll see some markers, some information about the Washington Homestead Grays playing on that site. If you go to the Nat Stadium, Josh Gibson's name is inside the stadium on the Ring of Honor, as well as he has a statue outside of Washington Nationals ballpark. Mm -hmm. So people always wonder why there's a statue of Josh Gibson in Washington, D.C. is because they played half their games in Pittsburgh and half their games at Griffin Stadium in Washington, D.C. OK, so watch have, out. You have a history in D.C. Don't get me started because I'm a DC girl now. I'm gonna have to go get my my Homestead Grays jersey with make sure it has the W on the sleeve right. and represent. Right. <laughs> uh, well, I'm ready to get into the reveal. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm really excited. Some what of what I've heard you all talk about him, I think is right is is on point with what we've learned about his ancestry. But before I get there, um, I want to be clear. So. Melva is the one who took the test. And we traced Josh Gibson's maternal ancestry. So we used DNA that Melva got from her mother. It's the exact same DNA that she shared with Josh. They got it from their grandmother. She got it from her mother and on and on. We've gone back 500 to 2000 years using DNA from Josh Gibson that exists in your body today, Melva. It gives me chills. And Sean, of course, because he was your great grandfather, this is part of your ancestry as well, but you couldn't take the test because you would have gone off on a different line of the family tree. Melva, why did you, had you ever even thought about where you were from in Africa before you got the call asking you to participate? Yes, yes, I did. I, I thought about that a lot of times, and a lot of my friends are doing it. And I thought about, it, I said, well, I wonder, I wonder if I could do it. Or, but I think one of my nieces started it, and they got so far. Then you know, if you get so far into it, there's a fee. So you know, that stopped mm -hmm. her because she was in college. <laughs> but I, I, I was interested in what she found, and uh, but I, I don't think she went any further than. You know, like you were saying, some of the grandmothers and the grandfathers like that. Mm -hmm. That's as far as she got. Well, this is great because what your niece did was genealogy research. She was looking at the paper right. trail and, and all of that and eventually hits a brick wall for us as black right. folks. And so, Sean, right. your decision to um, allow us to honor Josh Gibson uh, is very significant in that way, it's building a bridge now from what you all know about your family history to a certain point from uh, to where that ancestry was before Pittsburgh, uh, before the transatlantic slave trade. Why did you think it was important for us to do this? Well, one, number one, you know, we always want to know your roots. 
um, yeah. that's most important. We always want to know where we come from. And so when um, when Nicole called me and mentioned this, I was very excited about it because, you know, like Melva said, we had to start. And as far as we know, we just know as far as Buena Vista, Georgia. That's where Josh mm-hmm. and them came from, Buena Vista. That's the furthest we go back. So, you know, as African-Americans, we all want to know our history. Um, and it was an opportunity for us to learn more about our history and where we come from and the African root side of it. So, you know, it was just fitting for us to notice. And this is also good for our family. You know, we have a family reunion. Um, we can tell our family, tell our kids and pass this information on. So that was the most important for me is carrying this legacy on through, our, through the next generation of our family. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so let's go. Let's get into it. I'm, I have finally, uh, I feel more, probably more anticipation than you two. So we did find African ancestry because we don't always find African ancestry, but we did find African ancestry for um, Josh's maternal line. So his mother's 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 mother going all the way back uh, was most likely a woman living in a country on the west central coast of Africa that is known as Africa in miniature. Um, It is known for that because it has some of every part of Africa that can be found here in this country. Um, It was, it is the only country that speaks both French and English uh, because it was colonized by different uh, colonial powers uh, throughout history. Um, And it is a country that we find results from the most often. We also were able to find the ethnic group. So the country, present day country that you share ancestry with, that Josh Gibson shares maternal genetic ancestry with is Cameroon, okay? Cameroon, which is bordered by Nigeria and Gabon in the Western central part of Africa. The group that you share ancestry with in Cameroon is known as the Bamilake people. Bamilake. Actually, let me, I should probably just go to the next slide and then I can go back. So here's Cameroon and the people are the Bamilake people. What I loved about some of the things I heard you say is that the Bamilake are the business people of the culture, Josh. So in your, I'm sorry, Sean, I'm, I'm getting, well, it is okay. Josh too. That's he's that's he's here new. with us. That's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> he's here with us. Um, the, the work that you're doing to show young black kids the business side of baseball, I think was striking to me learning about the Bamile, the Bamilake. The other thing is we know that Josh Gibson was a power hitter, right? If I'm not mistaken, didn't he hit the most home runs of any baseball player ever? Yes. Credited, yep. His Hall of Fame plaques that's hit almost 800 home runs, so yes. And I feel like another statistic I, sh- I read said that he's hit the farthest home run ever hit. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, yeah. he hit the farthest. He hit the farthest home run in Yankee Stadium. In Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Well, same, the, the same, the, as they say, the same, the same stadium that Babe Ruth built. <laughs> mm, okay, Babe Ruth, aka the White Josh Gibson, right? There you go. Good, <laughs> good. That's that's it. Well, the Bamilake are known for uh, masquerades, which are celebrations of culture. And they wear these masks that represent elephants, which you can see in the upper right hand corner there. Um, They they represent um, leopards, but they also represent buffalo. And the mask in the middle is a Bamilake buffalo mask. And buffaloes represent strength, power, and greatness. So when I read this result, it just gave me chill. Yes. We can see evidence of Bamileke strength or Bamileke strength in your great, gr- your uncle and your great grandfather. Um, whew, okay. The, the last thing I'll share about the Bamileke is that you have some famous cousins. So 
So people like, um, I'm going too fast. People like Common, we've traced to the Bamilake. Forrest Whitaker, we've traced to the Bamilake, as we have for Chris Tucker and a representative Congressman Cory Booker. So uh, I want to formally welcome both of you to the African Ancestry family. And thank you deeply for allowing us the honor of tracing the ancestry of such a great man. We want to thank you. Um, this is the whole, first of all, I want to say this, and I'll let Melva speak. Uh, this information is very helpful. It's very interesting to uh, learn about this. Um, Cameroon, I've heard a lot about Cameroon. Um, so I, I know I'm familiar with that country, but I never heard of, uh, I never heard of the, uh, what's it called, how you pronounce it? Bamilake. Bamilake. I've never heard of that. But um, so this is great. You know, it's exciting to, um, like I said, it's always exciting to learn about your history. Um, and so now we have some information that we can share with our family and explain to them some of the things that you told us about the, the country and the tribe. And who our uh, distance cousins are. <laughs> so, uh, but but no, we really appreciate you guys reaching out to us and, you know, wanting to learn more about Josh Gibson. Um, yeah. Wanting to learn more about his legacy as of today, as well as his legacy as as, as the past with this answer, with the uh, reveal. So we want to thank you for uh, allowing us to share this. And of course, I want to thank you know, so Melva is my cousin. So I want to thank her for, uh, as soon as I called her, she jumped right on it. So uh, for her to do the DNA. So, you know, like I said, you know, we both want this to know, we both want this so we can, you know, we all have kids. We both have kids. We want our kids to know our history because, you know, you don't go nowhere unless you know something. So we got to know our history before we do anything. And um, I'm glad Melva was able to be able to take the test and it worked out because she lives in Atlanta and Nicole's in Atlanta. And so everything worked out. So uh, I'll let Melba say a few words and then, you know, we can go from there. Yes. I'm, I'm very happy about this. This is wonderful. This is, this is great news. And now I have something like Sean said to share with my children and my family and to know, and, and I know uncle Josh would have been so proud. He would have, he, he never would have thought that you could find out this much information about him. And I know he would have loved this. And being that the, 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 uh, the things that you described, strength, empowering, greatness. And that was him. That, that, that's the way he was. That's the way he carried himself. And, and that's the way he, that's the, that was the force behind the ball. And so, therefore, I, I think, oh, it, it, it relates a lot. It, it, what's going, what, what you found out and what he was, it, it relates a lot. And I, and I know he would be very proud of this information just as much as I am now, and I can't wait to share it with my sisters. And it, and I want to thank you very much for this. And and now when I hear them going, when I hear some of my nieces traveling, going to Nigeria, I say, oh, by the way, stop over in camera move. <laughs> I love that. I love that's, that. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. Oh, you are very welcome. It is it is our pleasure to um, to have been able to do this for you and to uh, and for your families and quite honestly for everyone that yep. you touch. Um, I, it's That's right. once we know who we are individually, we become much better family members and we become better community yep. members. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys go. But what I wanted to also just put in your ear, Sean, is that there's a Cameroon yes. national baseball yes. team and they're I ranked agree. sixth in Africa. So I don't know if there's some future oh, partnership really? down the road. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to make sure you knew that. I didn't know they played baseball in Cameroon. I thought they only wow. did soccer. <laughs> they sure do. So um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. It again has been a, an honor to wow. honor uh, Josh Gibson and his legacy through his descendants, Sean Gibson, the executive director of the Josh Gibson Foundation and his niece, Melva Brown. I hope, I wish you all well it, during the rest of the day. May you be happy, may you be healthy and may you be whole. Take care. I wanna know ya, Cameroon, Guinea-Bissau, Sierra Leone.
gotta let me show ya Nigeria, Yoko Island, Liberia I 